Carrie on with Carrie Fitz. I'm Carrie Fitz, owner and broker of Carrie Fitz Real Estate. If you're new here, welcome. Our podcast has useful information to both agents and consumers. Check back in for new episodes each week. In today's episode, we are discussing real estate and pets. According to the National Association of Realtors, or NAR, 66% of U.S. households currently own a pet or plan to get one. What does this mean and why is it important? And why keep in mind your clients' pets? Many people see their pets as beloved members of their family. For them, caring for a pet is a precious part of their lives. It satisfies a deep universal human need. There are many reasons why someone considers getting a pet. According to the American Heart Association, pets can help raise fitness levels, lower stress, blood pressure, cholesterol, and blood sugar. They can boost people's overall happiness and well being. But why keep in mind your clients' pets? Let's talk about when it's time to show a home. Although many people enjoy keeping pets inside their homes, there are other people who prefer not to. Some people have allergies to pet dander. It's estimated that about 10 to 20% of the world's population are allergic to cats and or dogs. So you may recommend your client to remove their pet or any signs of them when it's time for showing. Otherwise, it can deter people from making an offer. People will pet with pets usually get used to the smell, even though you may not smell it, visitors will. A few tips to sell a house that has pets are things like have the home professionally cleaned. A deep clean to remove any odors is essential. Baking soda is an all natural odor neutralizer. Replacing the filter for the HVAC will also help. Next, repair any damages. Pets can chew through cabinets, trim, and ruin furniture. Another major thing is to be aware of if your client has an aggressive dog or an unfriendly cat. It is the listing agents and their clients to ensure that everyone's safety when entering somebody's property. It's your responsibility. Charlie Lee, Senior Counsel and Director of Legal Affairs at the, Uni- at the National Association of Realtors says, safety education and proper communication are key to navigating encounters with dangerous animals in the real estate process. Since the listing agent can be held liable, I encourage agents to put a warning on the listing. Let's talk about when it's time to buy a home. In an article from NAR, it mentioned that 43% of households would be willing to move to better accommodate their pets. People prioritize their pet when deciding what home to buy. Do your buyers have pets? What are some features they're looking for? A large fenced in yard, durable pet friendly floors, a washing station, nearby dog parks, proximity to pet stores or a vet? The list just goes on and on. Another thing to note is that some HOAs have restrictions on the type, number, and size of pets they allow, especially in condos. Lastly, let's talk about pet fees. If you're a landlord, you may charge uh, or choose to charge pet fees. These may include a pet deposit, which is non-refundable. It's a fee that tenants charge to allow pets on the property. The purpose is to cover potential damage a renter's pet can cause during their rental period. Another fee you may consider is pet rent which is a monthly fee for pets in addition to regular rent. Just a few things to keep in mind whether you're an agent, a buyer, or a seller. That's all for today. Thanks for tuning in to Carry On with Carrie Fitz. I'm Carrie Fitz. Until next time.